The F.W. Woolworth Company was a retail company and one of the original pioneers of that five and dime store from 1879 to 1997. Welcome to Eric C. Productions. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified of my latest video that are posted during the week. Please leave a suggestion or a comment and maybe you might see that video in a future posting. Thanks for watching and now back to the program. It's May Value Days at Woolworth with savings for everyone. There are lots of summer values. Great buys like women's brightly colored t-shirts in the latest styles. Now two for just $9. Save $4 on men's Woolworth Sprinter jogging shoes, just $13.97. And save $3 on boys' sprinters, just $13.97. It's your everyday store for value. Cause at Woolworth, your dollar goes far. had open in competition. Although these chains were much smaller and less successful, each of the syndicate members decided to incorporate his company selling shares to friends and managers. This was done defensively as a safeguard against the hostile takeover, but also raised a lot of money making the pioneers rich. On November 5, 1909, Frank Woolworth opened his first store outside North America. A five and dime became three pence and six pence for the branch in Church Street, Liverpool, England. Woolworth had toyed with the idea of opening br in Britain ever since 1890 and took the plunge despite the reservations of his management. 1910, Frank Woolworth commissioned the design and construction of the Woolworth Building in New York City. A pioneering early skyscraper, it was designed by American architect Cass Gilbert. The building was paid for entirely in cash. It was completed in 1913 and was the tallest building in the world until 1930. It also served as the company's headquarters until the F.W. Woolworth Company's successor, the Venator Group, now Foot Locker, sold it in 1998. The final years of Frank Woolworth's life were filled with sadness. His beloved wife, Jenny, fell ill with a living death, which is called early onset Alzheimer's today. His eldest daughter, Edna, died in tragic circumstances. Ferd poor health as he got older. He was given to violent mood swings and was often bedridden for weeks on end. Nevertheless, his death came as a great shock across the retail world. He passed away just three days after complaining of a head cold as he left his desk in New York. He died from septic poisoning from a tooth infection on April 8, 1919. He was 66 and had been preparing for the 40th anniversary celebrations for his 1200 strong chain.
In 1924, a savvy group of Australian entrepreneurs were looking for a name for their new stupendous bargain basement. They cheekily applied to register the name F.W. Woolworth and Company Limited in an attempt to cash in on the brand's pulling power, even though they were completely unrelated. Infighting between the British and the American companies meant that neither raised its objection in time, allowing the venture to go ahead. The Aussies had the last laugh. Unlike the Palms, they had to resolve to complete a move into the food retailing in the 1960s. Today, they are the nation's market-leading supermarket in Australia. For many years, the company did a strictly 5 and 10 cent business, but in the spring of 1932, it added a 20 cent line of merchandise. The stores eventually incorporated lunch counters after the success of the counters in the first store in the UK in Liverpool that served as general gathering places, a precursor to the modern shopping mall food court. A Woolworths lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina became the setting for the 1960 Greensboro sit-ins during the Civil Rights Movement. The Woolworths concept was widely copied and 5 and 10 cent stores, also known as 5 and dime stores or dime stores, became a 20th century fixture in American downtowns. They would serve as anchors for suburban shopping plazas and shopping malls in the 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s. In the 1960s, the five and dime concept evolved into a larger discount department store format. In 1962, Woolworths founded a chain of large single floor discount stores called Woolco. Some of these stores were branded as Winfields after the founder's middle name. Woolworths started to diversify, buying businesses that would complement the new Woolco division. In 1963, the shoe giant G.R. Kinney was acquired. The retailer made its own products and provided a steady supply of cheap, reliable footwear for Woolworths and Woolco. In 1969, the fashion chain Richmond Brothers was acquired by Woolworths. Retailer and department store chains were taking over the traditional five and dime stores and offering prices and convenience small stores could not. Woolworth continued to expand into the 1960s and 1970s by opening up specialty stores and shopping malls across the United States. They were often opened under different names. There were also Woolworth Express stores that opened in malls that focused on personal care items. In 1974, Woolworths opened Foot Locker. By Woolworths' 100th anniversary in 1979, it had become the largest department store chain in the world. During the 1980s, the company began expansion into many different specialty store formats, including Afterthoughts, which sold jewelry and other accessories for women, Northern Reflections, which sold cold weather outerwear, Prescription Place, later sold to Farmore, and Champ Sports. The growth and expansion of the company contributed to its downfall. The Woolworth Company moved away from its five and dime roots and placed less emphasis on its department store chain as it focused on its specialty stores. In 1983, the Woolco chain closed in the United States. On October 15, 1993, Woolworths embarked on a restructuring plan that included closing half of its 800-plus general merchandise stores in the United States and converting its Canadian stores to a closeout division named The Bargain. Shop. Woolco and Woolworth survived in Canada until 1994 when the company sold the majority of the Woolco stores to Walmart. The Woolco stores that Walmart did not purchase were either converted to the bargain shop, sold to Zellers, or closed permanently. Approximately 100 Woolworth stores in Canada were rebranded as the bargain shop and the remainder closed. 
So what caused the fall of Woolworths? Analysts at the time cited that the lower prices of the large discount stores and the expansion of supermarket grocery stores, which had begun to stock merchandise also sold by five and dime stores, as contributors to Woolworths' decline in the late 20th century. On July 17, 1997, the last Woolworths store was closed and then a company renamed itself Foot Locker Inc., which Woolworths started all the way back in the 1970s. Actually, they changed its corporate name to Venator. On October 20th, 2001, the company changed names again, taking the name of its top retail performer and became Foot Locker. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.